widely regarded as the father of special effects in Japan, Eiji Tsuburaya was born in Tsugagawa City, Fukushima, on July 7, 1901. Due to his great love of airplanes and flying, after graduating from grade school in 1915, he entered the Japan Flying School. At the age of 18, he was hired as a scenario writer by Japan Natural Color Film Company, which later merged with Kokatsu, where Tsuburaya worked for a trick filming expert and learned the basic techniques of special effects. After a brief stint in the Japanese Army, he moved to Shochiku, where he first gained credit as a cameraman in 1927. He did several films for Gojiro Hayashi, at which time he pioneered the usage of a camera crane and smoke effects, showing a good aptitude for special filming techniques. In 1931, Tsuburaya first met Akira Watanabe at Shochiku's art department, where he started to do glass work and simple miniature filming, and he also developed a new kind of screen process. While briefly working for Nikatsu, Tsuburaya saw King Kong for the first time, changing his life forever. This film stirred Tsuburaya's creative instincts, instilling in him a burning desire to blaze a special effects trail in the Japanese film industry. At J.O. Studios in 1935, he met with animator Kenzo Masaoka and made the Japanese folktale Kaguya Hime, Princess of the Moon, combining miniature work with optical effects. Out of this film, Eiji Tsuburaya formulated the final image of what he wanted to do for special effects, and afterwards his lifelong but ultimately unfulfilled dream became a remake of Kaguya Hime. Perfecting his screen process technique to levels exceeding that of his European colleagues, Tsuburaya earned notoriety for the Japanese film industry, gaining him a job at PCL in Tokyo, the company which eventually would become Toho Movie Company. Given charge over the special effects department, Tsuburaya started a boom in special effects films by producing numerous war films, starting with Major Nango, the first film in which he combined his love of aviation with special effects. In 1942, he was joined by Akira Watanabe and several others of his future team at Toho, and with a staff of 60, he made propaganda war movies under director Kajiro Yamamoto, including The War at Sea from Hawaii to Malay, which featured a reenactment of Pearl Harbor, and garnered the studio several film technique awards. However, this led to his being temporarily blacklisted by the occupation forces after World War II, but he again started working by establishing his own company, Tsuburaya Special Effects Technique Laboratory, which provided the special effects for Daiei's The Invisible Man Appears in 1949. Unable to keep his own company afloat, he returned to Toho just two years later. He would team with Oshiro Honda in 1953 on two war films before they teamed up for the film which would ultimately define both of their careers, Godzilla. Not only was Godzilla a tremendous success, it also won for Tsuburaya the first of his five eventual Japan Movie Technique Awards for its amazing and unusual effects. Nevertheless, the field of special effects was lowly regarded at this time, and Tsuburaya got scant respect from those outside of his own department despite the great financial success which he brought to Toho. But his continued success eventually raised the profile of the special effects department so that in 1957, the special effects department of Toho was formally organized with Tsuburaya as its head. Tsuburaya's power at the studio began to grow exponentially, so much so that he was able to convince the studio to fund some expensive high-profile acquisitions that allowed him to take Toho's special effects to new heights. In 1960, he had Yasuyuki Inoue design a huge outdoor water tank in the rear of the Toho lot for staging epic special effects scenes involving water, and in 1964, he purchased an Oxbury 1900 optical printer, one of only two in the world at that time, to aid in the optical photography. At its peak, the special effects department employed over 200 full-time workers. Tsuburaya took a short break from filming in 1962 to visit film studios in both America and Europe, during which time he gained additional inspiration as well as a healthy dose of envy at the resources available in foreign studios. Upon his return to Japan in 1963, he had the foresight to see the potential of television and established Tsuburaya Special Effects Productions, later changed to Tsuburaya Productions, as a separate effects house for TV. The company would go on to gain fame as producer of many television series, the first of which was the extremely popular Ultra Q series in 1966. 
This success allowed the company to create a true monster boom in Japan, with Tsuburaya Productions leading the way with Ultraman, Ultra 7, Mighty Jack, and many more. Although, ironically, the success of TV also started the demise of the Japanese motion picture industry, which he had helped to build. Eiji Tsuburaya had an overwhelming love of children and always kept them in mind when making a film, being sure not to allow bloodletting or excessive violence into his work. A man of great pride and determination, he worked through an illness which became progressively worse in 1969, the sickness taking its toll on him until he died of a heart attack in 1970. With scant financial resources and few true film professionals to assist him, Eiji Tsuburaya's role was not only that of a visionary leader, but also as a team builder. As a consequence, he was forced to use his ingenuity and creativity to create the impossible, leading to many unique innovations. While Eiji Tsuburaya was no doubt the driving force behind Toho's special effects, his role has tended to become romanticized over time, so much so that it is easy to think that he did everything. While very much hands-on and involved in many areas, the contributions of his staff tend to get overlooked. Production designer Toshiro Aoki used the analogy of a sushi chef to describe the real situation. Tsuburaya would envision what he wanted to present. His staff went through all the details and prepared all the best ingredients, but the master chef still had a difficult task to assemble all the ingredients properly and to make the presentation as attractive as possible so as to make the customer want to partake and enjoy. Without this, the potential of even the best ingredients would not be realized. And Eiji Tsuburaya was a master chef, cooking up some of the most incredible images in the history of motion pictures. <laughs>